Oh my gosh! Is this Cora? Hi everyone, I'm Tingyi from Mandai Wildlife Group. Welcome to another episode of Hashtag AMA Ask Mandai Anything Where you ask we answer! Alright, joining us today, we have a very special guest from the Reptile Care team. His name is Jose Pedro, the Deputy Head Keeper. Hello Say everyone! Hi. So, how long have you been working with reptiles? I've been working for more than 25 years with reptiles, but specific with the Roti Island snake turtles mm -hmm. is when I came here to work in Singapore. They arrived a few months later and it's been almost 12 years working with them. Wow, 12 long years. Well, there are a lot of questions that have been asked by all of you, so we're going to answer some of them today. So, let's take it away with the first question. Okay, the first question is, how big can this turtle get or grow? Normally, the sizes of the turtles, it depends on the size of the carapace. We don't count the legs or the neck and the tail. This is why normally the carapace for females are much larger, reaching around 30 centimeters, mm -hmm. and males are a bit smaller, reaching around 20 centimeters. But when they are juveniles, obviously they're still the same size. This is why you need to look the plastron, the top part of the animal mm -hmm. is called the carapace. The bottom part of the animal is called the plastron. All right, second question. Oh, this is exciting. Is this turtle related to the Loch Ness Monster? Ooh, that is a very interesting question. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it to your imagination. Yeah, it can be, I don't know. Yeah, can be, cannot. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's you decide on that. Is this the evil turtle in Gumball? This is. Oh my gosh! Is this Cora? These what turtles are like? very. But it's. No, it looks completely different. If you see the part of the mm -hmm. back, you can see the carapace of them is very hard. Mm. In this one, it looks like a shelf shell turtles. They are a bit more aggressive than this one. These ones are really, really friendly. Oh, they are really yeah. cute. They are always smiling. If you see the face, they look oh, like yes. a very huge smile. From the front? Yep. Okay, next question. <clears throat> oh, this is from a young boy. What is their current population in the wild now? The truth is, we don't know. Uh, we believe that these species are complete extinct in the wild. Searching in the uh, lakes of the Roti Island, mm -hmm. we couldn't find uh, just one individual. Like, it was completely clear. This is why we're working together with a, a lot of organizations to breed these animals and try to reintroduce these animals back in the wild. And the Roti Island snake turtles are endemic from a very tiny island in Indonesia. They is called Roti Island. Sadly, these turtles became a very a special animal to have in animal collection. This is why people from overseas try to buy these turtles and sell it in the illegal market. When they sell it in the black market, they can cost very, very expensive. This is why we highly recommend to don't participate and buy this species. Oh, well, he has a second question. Mm -hmm. Is that why do they have long necks? They help them to lunge the neck to catch the prey. At the same time, because these animals are very shy, what they do is they hide under the, the logs and they just stick the neck outside to mm, breathe. They smart. use like a snorkeling. Yeah. And then that brings us to our next question is, where can I buy these Roti Island snake necks? Like so what we say? Is, no, no, to the illegal pet trade. Because sometimes when we buy these animals, we don't know how to take care most of them end to be dying. And the ones that don't die, they grow so big that we don't have a space at home and we release in the wild. And that is a big, huge mistake mm. because these turtles are more competitive than the local ones. This is why educate yourself first, read about the animal that you like it, and after that you decide if when you want it or not. Yes, that's very important. So all of you out there who wants to keep a pet, think, read. All right, let's move on to our next question. How did you guys encourage them to breed? Ooh, we give a lot of love. Aww. For these animals to breed, 
uh, they need to have the correct habitats and the necessary things for them to breed. They dig on the ground to lay the eggs and borrow the eggs. This is why what we provide is uh, water land where the animals can spend the time and when they need to nest, they can just go to the land area and they have sun and plants where they can dig and lay the eggs. It it's a very romantic a area. romantic area. We put flowers, <laughs> plants. Next question. How did Singapore Zoo get to be the only place to house this assurance colony in Asia? Because we are one of the best zoos in Southeast Asia, right? Singapore is a very safe place and obviously Singapore Zoo have a very good reputation and we have a very good animal care team and vets. We are the only ones mm -hmm. in uh, Southeast Asia outside of Indonesia they carry this insurance colony. This is why in collaboration with Monday Nature and WCS we receive animals from different areas. We house them here in Singapore Zoo until they are ready to go into Kupang. We are very happy to send them because we know they is for a very good reason, but we love these animals so much that every time when we see these animals go, obviously part of our heart goes with them. Aww. How closely re related are these turtles to the Australian and New Guinea ones? And did their island ancestor, Island Hawk, in Australia through Asia. Yes, these animals are very related. And if you notice, most of the species, they can be found in now normally in the south of Asia or outer Asia. Mm -hmm. It's most of the species, they have a side neck. That means when they try to hide the neck, mm -hmm. they hide to the side. They cannot retract mm -hmm. inside the shell. Obviously, they have a different genus and it's been so many years of uh, evolution they kind of different these animals to different genes and different gen genetics and things like that but yeah they're almost all quite related well today i learned something new all right let's take a look at our last question oh when you release the turtles back into the wild how do you know if the environment they are released into is actually safe as Amandai Nature and WCS, we work very close with the government of Indonesia and we search the lakes. We have so many studies. It's not like yeah, we just go there and release two turtles and we don't care. They're going to have a lot of trackings. They're going to have a lot of research to see how these animals are doing. Even if the animals they are introduced in these lakes are affecting to the reintroduction of these animals. This is why it's going to be a tough work. We'll be in collaboration, but this is something that the government of Indonesia is going to take mostly of the uh, job. So it's a lot of effort. It's not just a one person thing. It's Ooh. a lot of people coming together to ensure that these species have a very safe home uh, when they're released back into. So Jose, how do you feel answering all these questions? It's a bit weird, but at the same time, it's very fun. I really enjoy educating people. And obviously, if I need to share information about these animals, I'm more than happy to answer all these questions. And drop by to the zoo at the Reptile Pier, you may get to see Jose walking around. So if you see him, yeah. say hi. If you have more questions, feel free to ask him as well. So, I'll be more than welcome to answer them. All right, so everyone, thank you once again for tuning in to Let's Do It Together. Hashtag AMA Ask Mandai Anything, where you ask, we, we answer. answer. Thank you everyone and see you bye soon. Bye-bye.